Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Benjamin Gunner in 25 caliber. The Gunner is the latest addition to Benjamin's Craftsman line. This is made in Turkey, not here in the US, but should be pretty nice overall. Represents a real high-end price point, right around $1,000, but has a lot of high-end features to go with that. And obviously, we're going to take a look at how it performs today. But first, a little housekeeping. Wanted to take a quick second and let you guys know we are definitely feeling some of that pressure from YouTube right now in terms of getting the content that we're putting out to you guys out to the rest of the world to non-shooters. Uh, we are trying to get this stuff out to as wide a breadth of people as possible. And the only way we can do that is if you guys uh, like, comment, share, basically trip that YouTube algorithm and uh, make it boost this video, show it as a recommended thing. Uh, we would appreciate it a ton. If you're not already subscribed, please do so if you like the content we're putting out here on the channel. Uh, it helps us a ton and again, helps us grow the channel and get the content out there to more people and spread the good news of air powered awesomeness. So without further ado, let's get into the gunner. You're starting at the front of the gun. You do have a threaded end cap for the muzzle there. Uh, the gun does also come with this uh, secondary end cap that you can swap out for the uh, existing shroud end and it's got half inch UNF threads on it so you can throw a moderator on there if you want to. The fact that it comes with this is really nice, really easy to install as well, uh, but the shroud does a really great job honestly of quieting the gun down. You guys will see that a little bit later on. Following up uh, down at the bottom of the barrel there, you do have a 500cc air tank, so a ton of onboard air capacity there. The gun does fill to just 3000 PSI, so that does make it nice and easy to fill, even though you do have a high air capacity. And of course, dropping back here, we do have a fully regulated system and the regulator can be adjusted. One thing I will say personally not a fan of, it is not externally adjustable. So in terms of how you go about adjusting this, it is detailed in the manual, but you do have to degas the gun, remove the bottle, uh, and then remove a piece of this uh, fill assembly here to go ahead and get to the reg adjustment. It's relatively easy to do, but not as easy as some other guns out there. Uh, on that reg block though, we do have our fill pressure gauge there. And on the other side of the gun, we have a quick disconnect fill fitting, which I love to see. Great that uh, Benjamin has integrated that into this gun here uh, and makes it really universal to any of their other guns as well. Now dropping down below that, we have a integrated metal Picatinny rail, which I've mounted a bipod to today. This is a UTG TBNR bipod, uh, but you can mount whatever bipod you like onto there. Just makes it nice and easy to accessorize the gun without crowding things too much. And then just behind the rail, you guys will notice a secondary gauge. Now this is our regulator pressure gauge. Nice that Benjamin's integrated that in there. And so as you make adjustments, if you want to, uh, you can go ahead and track those adjustments on that gauge. It is also a very handy tool for potentially diagnosing any performance issues you might have with the gun as you're using it, making sure things are uh, working as they should be. Before we get too far along, I forgot to mention, the gun does also come in a hard case that does have some wheels on it, so I suppose you could use it for transportation if you needed to. Speaking of what else the gun comes with, uh, your magazine system. So the gun does ship with two magazines. In the 25 caliber here, it's a 10 round magazine. Uh, in 22, it's a 12 round mag. So, and these are universal to any of the other Craftsman line guns. Uh, so you have a nice side lever operated breech. Let me flip it around here. You do have a nice drop down on that side lever as well uh, that pulls back very easily, nice and smooth, and the mags just load in like so. Uh, they will prevent you from cycling the bolt once they're empty, which is a nice little feature, lets you know you're out of ammo. But these are held in with a ball detent, which is very functional, it keeps the mag locked in place. It's not gonna pop out on you in the woods or in the field, decocking the gun, very simple as well. You just hold the bolt back, you go ahead, pull the trigger and release, and you are good and safe. Speaking of the safety, it is located on the right, left-hand side of the gun for you righties out there, uh, and is AR style-ish. Uh, you have your safe position here, fire position there, really easy to operate, no issues. Uh, and then at the front of the breech, we do have a transfer port power adjustment here. You can see it's on the highest power setting here, and there are some marks for detents, but I can't really feel it detent into there as you go up to that low power setting. But of course, we'll do our best to uh, get some consistent setting points and then track what it does to the velocity over the chronograph here for you in a little bit. 
Now up at the top of the breach, we have a Picatinny rail system. Uh, we've mounted an Element Optics Helix today, complements the gun really nicely, six to 24 magnification in some UTG Pro rings. Also uh, made in America rings, by the way, really, really nice stuff. Uh, dropping back to the AR style butt stock, we do have a normal castle nut, even though it doesn't look like it. This will correspond to any castle wrench you might have at home for your ARs and such. Uh, and the buttstock itself is actually quite nice, multi-adjustable. So obviously you have your length of pull adjustment in a couple positions, I believe five, uh, but you also have a cheek piece adjustment integrated in as well as a rubber butt pad, which is nice too. Uh, and they even give you a little Picatinny rail here. You can mount a rear monopod to stabilize things off a bench if you want. I also didn't mention the grip, nice rubberized grip. It's a standard AR grip. You can replace it with whatever you like. Uh, just so you know, all of this stuff is AR compatible so feel free to swap till your heart's content. Uh, without further ado though, now that we've run down the features, let's get out to the range and see how the gunner performs. So stretching the gunner to 45 yards, we'll start off with the JSB Kings, the 25-4 standard Kings. Uh, you have a 7 8 inch group for all 10 shots there. If you take that high one out, which was probably me anyway, uh, you're looking at a 5 8 inch group. So certainly good enough to get the job done. Not too bad, but better by far. These King Heavy Mark IIs, 33.9 grains, uh, an absolutely stellar 10 shot group at a half inch, which is awesome. Out of a thousand dollar gun, pretty much what you'd expect it to do. And as much as we'd like to stretch its legs further, we don't really have the room to do so right now in the warehouse, sadly, uh, but should be doing very nice if it's putting uh, this kind of accuracy downrange. Should be doing just fine over the chronograph. We'll go chrono it now. I will say in addition, um, for those of you that are noticing why this is so much higher, I held over a little bit too much, so that's on me. Uh, but uh, no slugs shot well enough to put them on paper, and this thing just loves JSBs. Nothing wrong with that. We're used to seeing it. Uh, let's get the gunner over the chronograph and see what it's got going on. So putting our JSB King Heavy Mark IIs, those 33.9 grain pellets, over the chronograph from a full 3,000 PSI fill, you were looking at 53 shots on the regulator where it's set up currently right out of the box at 1,650 PSI. And of course, this is with that transfer port setting on that highest power or basically open all the way. You were looking at an average velocity of 766 feet per second over those 53 shots, which is right around 44, 45 foot pounds of energy. Uh, now, that's not the most powerful thing, but it, remember, you can adjust the regulator, probably kick that power up some, uh, but with an extreme spread of just 11 feet per second and a standard deviation of just 2.4 feet per second, this gun is performing really, really consistently. You can't argue with these numbers, and of course, that's going to lead to good downrange accuracy that we saw. Now, moving over to that transfer port power adjustment, like I said, the detents that are supposed to be there in those little holes, you can't really feel it on our gun, uh, but at the max power, again, you're looking at 766 feet per second, around 44 foot pounds, drops down very slightly at that fourth power setting. So just about five, six feet per second difference. Uh, and the third power level, we do see some more drop there, uh, 745. But again, you're talking one to two foot pounds per drop until you get to that first power setting uh, all the way at the top next to that minus symbol, 650 feet per second. Again, using those 33.9 JSB King Heavies, uh, the Mark II's 31-ish foot pounds. So you're gonna have a more finite adjustment range, but again, something to be used in tandem with that reg pressure adjustment to get the gun set up just how you want. All right, so wrapping up the Benjamin Gunner here, uh, this latest addition to that Craftsman line is a welcome one in my opinion. Uh, nice to have some adjustability built into the gun, although I would like to see that regulator adjustment be externally accessible. I understand there are some complications there, but personally we see the rest of the market going that direction, and maybe we'll see Benjamin doing this into the future. Uh, but a ton of shots off of just a 3,000 PSI fill, which is great. I really do like that Benjamin and Crossman have standardized their guns at that 3,000 PSI mark and haven't really followed that trend of going higher. It makes the guns a little bit more attractive for those of you hand pumping or maybe if you're operating off of a smaller 
carbon fiber tank. It's a little bit easier. You're going to get some more fills out of it. But the gunner itself, very accurate gun. Obviously, half inch groups with those 33.9 King uh, Heavy Mark IIs there. Uh, regulators doing its job quite well. The transfer port adjustment is a little bit lost on me in terms of its usefulness, just because it's not actually giving you a ton of adjustment range there. Although I think if you partner that with that reg adjustment, you're going to see some interesting stuff there and be able to set the gun up for different things pretty easily. I will also say I did remove the butt stock and there is not a uh, hammer spring tension adjustment built into this platform at all. So no point to remove this unless you are going to change the stock around, which you certainly can do. Again, another nice feature that they built in with the AR compatibility here. Uh, one thing I will say though, you do need to read the manual, especially if you are going to attempt to adjust that regulator, just something to be cognizant of. It walks you through all the steps, has some pictures in there as well. Uh, I like that Benjamin and Crossman have included this little half inch UNF adapter. They've done some really nice things here. They've kept the gun quiet, good solid trigger, nice multi-shot capability. The side lever works well. The gun works well as a whole. Uh, if you're interested in a tactical setup and you don't want to jump into the FX air arms, rapid air weapons world of, you know, $1,500 plus guns, this is one you should definitely have your eye on. For the insider, I'm Tyler Patner. Uh, again, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think of the gunner if you're interested in checking it out or picking one up yourself uh, and to keep the conversation going down below. And if you are not already, we appreciate it a ton if you subscribe and share the video with your friends as well. Helps us uh, defeat those YouTube algorithms and keeps the channel growing, which we appreciate a ton. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram too, and we'll see you at the next one.